Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tua mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et nora mortis nostre. Amen. In nomine Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Today we have the great honor and privilege of welcoming the traveling image of Our Lady of Guadalupe. It's the one officially approved by the Cardinal Archbishop and uh, Primate of all of Mexico, the Cardinal Archbishop of um, Defe, Mexico City. This is the official image. It's making its way around, and so it's our great honor and privilege to welcome Our Lady in a special way today. Of course, as you know, the priest of attorney of St. Peter's North American, uh, well, Western Hemisphere, I should say, uh, seminary, English-speaking seminary, of course, is also dedicated to Our Lady of Guadalupe, Our Lady of Guadalupe Seminary. Of course, we have one seminarian and hopefully another one here in the sanctuary with us today. Our Lady of Guadalupe, as you know, the story, 16th century, Our Lady appears to St. Juan Diego. Why should this be important for us? Isn't it, uh, we could say, well, it's very nice, but maybe this is just kind of a private, you know, Mexican devotion, and here we are up here in North America, so we don't uh, really need that. That would be a completely wrong. It's not, our Lord and Our Lady do nothing out of uh, coincidence or chance. And so we know that it was a great sign that the great apparition of Our Lady should occur when and where it did. Our Lady of Guadalupe is not the patroness only of Mexico, but the Holy Mother Church has declared her to be the patroness of all the Americas. That means the North and the Central and the South, all of the Americas, the whole Western Hemisphere is dedicated under the put under the patronage of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And so there's a universal aspect to this devotion. It's not just for uh, Mexicans or those of Spanish descent. It's for all of us. And so we recall just one aspect of Our Lady's apparition to St. Juan Diego. Those most tender words. As you know, of course, the Spanish had arrived and uh, the native peoples are there. And how are they to appropriate this gospel? San Juan Diego already was a Catholic, but um, at any rate. So Our Lady appears to him, of course, as we see her here, as an Indian uh, virgin uh, maiden. Very important. As Our Lady says in her own Magnificat, Thou hast exalted the humble and the meek. Our Lady could have appeared to many more people who would have been of a greater lineage and noble descent, uh, perhaps in uh, French-speaking Canada. Those would be the most uh, regal people who came to these shores, we could say. They can fight for that title with the Spaniards. At any rate, why didn't she appear there? Nothing against them. Our Lady chose, even as God chooses often, to exalt the humble and the meek. So she came to the lowly, the little ones. Those wonderful tender words of Our Lady of Guadalupe, we can make our own. Saint Juan Diego was understandably frightened at this apparition of Our Lady. And what did she say to him? Am I not here who am your mother? Am I not here who am your mother? And we can see this is Our Lady speaking not only to San Juan Diego, but to each one of us across all uh, times and spaces. The Blessed Virgin Mary is our true mother. She was given to us as our mother by our Lord himself on the cross in the person of Saint John. Behold your mother, behold your son. So like Saint Juan Diego, we need to become or recognize rather our own lowliness. True humility is to know the truth about ourselves. And the truth about ourselves is that each one of us is lowly, just a bit of dust that God has fashioned from the dust of the earth and chosen to animate, to breathe a soul 
that can house the Blessed Trinity. And that's the humility we have to have to know the truth about ourselves, our creatureliness. And so with Saint Juan Diego, we have to make ourselves the children, the true children of Our Lady. And so it's wonderful to have these devotions as we have right now. It's a great way to foster our spirit, but it's not something merely external. We have to make it internal. And that, of course, is to unite ourselves in prayer and sacrifice to love God and love our neighbor. Here in the North America, it's very easy to become insular and to think only of ourselves. Arguably, we're the most wealthy and powerful nation in the world. It's very easy just to think about ourselves, our own interests, our own 401k programs, whatever. But on our northern and southern borders, there are all kinds of people who are neglected, the poor, the outcast, and we have really to examine our consciences and think how is it that we are to minister to them, to be Christ to them, so that truly Our Lady may appear to be the mother of all, the lowly and the fortunate alike. God bless you and Ave Maria.